Welcome, everybody, to an awesome episode of Rock Talk with Doc Rocker. I am Jeff Bonomo, and I am joined with the Doc Rocker himself, musician extraordinaire, Danton Arlotto. Danton, what are we talking about today on the show? Well, in light of recent events, Jeff, it's only fair that we dedicate some of our time to um, the, the recent loss of one of our greats, Eddie Van Halen. Uh, as many of you may already know, and for those of you who don't know, passed away uh, about two weeks ago uh, due to cancer. And of course, the entire, not even just the metal community, but I would say probably the entire music world is definitely shaken by this loss. He was by far one of the greatest guitar players who ever lived. And that's, of course, it's an easy thing to say because everyone who knows about Eddie says that, but it's really true. And I'd like, maybe we take some time today and explore why and kind of talk about that and see if maybe we can say some things that haven't already been said about this man and the legacy that he has left for us. Yeah, when you talk about guitar players, even if you're not a music fan, chances are you know who Eddie Van Halen is. Yeah, he's kind of a uh, not, culture icon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not to discount, you know, like the guitar greats that we would mention in, in one breath, like Steve Vai, uh, yeah. and John Petrucci, uh, even Jimi Hendrix. But if you're not a music fan, you may not know who Petrucci is. You may not know who Steve Vai is. You right. know, but you do know. Eddie Van Halen, I, you know, maybe the only other one I could I could say would probably be Jimi Hendrix, or, you know. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely probably the top two as far as like guitar yeah. players that non-musicians at least have heard the name of and sort of know like, oh yeah, Hendrix was like a big guy in the 60s and then he died really young. And oh, Eddie was this big guy in the 80s and was like this big crazy thrasher shredder kind of dude and he played a bunch of guitar stuff and guitar players love him for whatever reason. And okay, cool, whatever. Yeah, that's the thing about, anyway. you know, Eddie Van Halen. Is, yeah. is people yeah. people that aren't even musically inclined will know who he is. And that, that, that does say a lot. Now, before we do start, I do have to mention something. I did kind of get in a little bit of an internet fight with somebody uh, right after really? his passing. Yeah, just, just a little bit. It, it wasn't even about uh, how great of a guitar player he was. It was the fact that he was a guitar player uh, because um, I belong to many Facebook groups, and one of them is since I love the vacation in Las Vegas. It's a Las Vegas Facebook group. Well, the Fremont Street Experience, um, which is a big uh, canopy on Fremont Street, uh, it's a big projection screen, and they had Eddie Van Halen up there. And so there was a uh, after he passed away, they had a, a picture of him. They had a, you know video of him playing, a nice little tribute to him. So the local uh, Las Vegas News did a story. And um, they called him the singer of Van Halen. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Not the guitar player. They called him the singer. And so someone, you know, I, 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 you know, people posted about that, you know, and people are just kind of, of ragging on him. big upright, yeah. You know, and one guy said like, um, you know, well, they, you can't expect them to be experts about everything. And I had a reply with, I was like, well, first of all, you know, since I work in in, in television. Uh, it's part of the, the job to do that due diligence. Is do that the job. Homework. Yeah. At least know yeah, a little bit of what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, the guy's like, well, you know, you know, they can't get everything right. I'm like, this isn't like Joe Blow from down the street. This is Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is Eddie Van Halen. It's not some wannabe guitar player, local, local yokel guy. This is one of the best that ever lived. So I kind of got a little argument with this guy about that because. Yeah, rightfully so. You didn't think Eddie Van Halen um, was important you know, enough to, to get correct what part of the band he was. That's really yeah, interesting. Really. That's funny. You know, you know, like, um, and, 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 you know, even in our uh, Facebook group, uh, one of my, one of our, one of my friends, good friend of mine, Jim Dormer, who um, he's very opinionated about some stuff. And, uh, you know, he posted in our Facebook group and he, uh, the, the Rock Talk Facebook group and said, hey, guys, no offense, but Van Halen was like a Led Zeppelin of the 80s. You know, there's lots of cover songs. Uh, you really got me, Pretty Woman, you know, mo the most famous ones. Um, but I will have to defend that, but uh, defend Eddie Van Halen by saying, like, uh, okay, Van Halen did do a lot of cover songs. But what Eddie Van Halen did to those cover songs, like, he added Completely to them. Unheard of at the time, just yeah. the way that he played. Yeah. yeah. Just just think about, like, when I hear You Really Got Me, I don't really think of the Kinks version. I think mm -hmm. of that song that comes after Eruption, you know, and he, the way he plays that soul there and what he did to that song, you know, he took he took that cover 
and all the covers that Van Halen has, has done, he, he took those covers and he just elevated them because not only was he a, a guitar virtuoso, but he, he was able to write good songs. Like I think that's that's that what that's what separates him from a lot of the other shredder guitar players. I think that he was able to write yeah, songs. Yeah, he, he definitely had a solid core to stand on. Uh, that, that was always something I kind of assumed about him. You know, like I remember like being like 14, 15, just kind of getting into like the whole rock world for the first time and exploring, like trying to find out all of the different things about all the really famous acts. And I remember I was literally reading Guitar for Dummies, you know, when I first started getting into guitar, you know, to like learn about, you know, the different positions and how to play. And like every four dummies book out there has like a top 10 section at the end. I think they call it the part of tens. And of course in the guitar book, there's, you know, like a top 10 guitars you should know about. So like, you know, like the Fender Stratocaster, the Telecaster, the Gibson, Les Paul, all like the really famous guitars that are kind of household names. And there was a top 10 guitar players of all time. And of course, Van Halen is on that list. And, you know, and they're talking about how he like revolutionized shredding, you know, techniques, you know, like, like with finger tapping and with, you know, hammer-ons, pull-offs and sweeps and all kinds of like all, all like the real big heavy shredder stuff. And I remember right. thinking like, oh, okay, eh, that's cool, whatever. And kind of like getting this more impression, like, oh, maybe he's a little overrated, you know, maybe he kind of, you know, it's, it's just all notes and no music. And of course, by the time I, you know, and it's one of those things I never kind of gave him like the proper listen until many years later, where I actually listened to Eruption for the first time when I had a job teaching at a rock and roll school. And it was like, of course, you got to like know a little bit about Van Halen. So I was like, oh, let me get into it. I had a, I had a student that was working on Hot for Teacher. So we did that whole opening tapping bit that was pretty, and I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. And then checking out Eruption and, and yeah. just like kind of like scrutinizing it with like a really critical eye of like really kind of breaking down what he's playing. What are those notes? How do those notes relate to each other? And being really, really impressed by just how revolutionary his playing and his technique really was. And like, it's like, wow, I'm so, I'm so glad I was wrong about kind of thinking, oh, he's like this kind of just overrated kind of shredder dude. He's really, really worth talking about. And um you know, in, in light of his recent passing, I decided, well, let, let, let me give him a little bit of a better listen. Let me, you know, let me go on Spotify and do like maybe a, like 30 minutes to an hour's worth and just go through all his different kind of big hits. And of course, some of the stuff I recognized right away. And then there was a couple other new songs that came on that I'd never heard before. And pretty much consistently each and every time I'm like, all right, let, let, let me like, I want to be really critical of this guy. Cause I know it's like really easy to like just shower him with all kinds of praise and everyone's going to, all of a sudden, everyone's going to come out as a big Van Halen fan now that he's passed. You know, that's kind of one of those things with the art you know there's always an immediate uh you know resurgence of appreciation for a recently deceased artist and rightfully so and i thought you know like let, let, let me like really try to you know maybe this can be one of those kind of hot take episodes where i kind of like pick him apart and say maybe he's not all he was cracked up to be but let me tell you each and every solo that i heard in every song was like wow it not only is it really, really technically proficient, but it's also really, really well done. It's really tasteful. It's really musical. All of the notes he plays in each of his solos is there for a reason. Like he's never, it's ne like, I never got that impression that, that he's like just playing for the sake of look at how many notes I can fit into a bar. You never really get that with any of his solos. And he has a lot, of, I was really, really impressed by a lot of moments throughout where he, where his solos take a breather, you know, he puts a little bit of empty space, you know, a couple slow lines, a, a lot of really, really nice melody playing. And like, you, if, if you can literally sing one of his guitar solos, you know that like, there is a lot more here than just playing lots of notes a mile a minute. He was really so far ahead of his time. And the fact that you can, you could, you could, you could, you could write up any of those guitar players that we mentioned earlier, Steve Vai, John Petrucci, um, and they're each and every single artist out there is going to cite Van Halen as one of their inspirations. You know, anyone just, in the... Yeah. I just watched a video. I just watched a video with Steve Vai today, an older mm -hmm. video of him talking about Eddie Van Halen. It wasn't a video, you know, that came out recently. This was like... Yeah, years ago. I know what you're talking about. It was years ago. And he was like, my favorite guitar player is Eddie Van Halen. You know, I, he was talking about... Um, I guess it was when Steve Vai was playing with David Lee Roth, Eddie Van Halen, you know, had Sammy Hagar, and Steve Vai's like, there's not a competition here, but um, he's my favorite, you know, he's one of my favorite guitar players. Um, so that was really nice, and and I did exactly what you did, too. Um, I went back, and I listened to, because I haven't listened to Van Halen in a long time, you know, mm -hmm. so after he passed away, I went back and went through all the others, all the stuff, again, bringing back memories, um, a lot of memories. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure. And, you know, I'm thinking, wow, this was like, 
I, you know, the first album, uh, first couple albums, that came out in the late 70s. So imagine you're, it's the late 70s and, and you're hearing Eruption for the first time. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know that was one of the things like. It's like hearing Hendrix play the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock. Sure, yeah. It's yeah. completely the unheard of. That I grew up with. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in high school, like that was one of the bars that the kids that used to compete against each other in high school, the guitar player guys, uh, can you play eruption? That was one of the, the questions. If you can't, if you can play eruption, you were a good guitar player in high school, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I, I don't remember any kid really knowing a note for note, but pretty close. At least getting uh, an approximation. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, I, it, it just brought back a lot of memories and they're great songs. Even the stuff with, um, you know, when when they went from David Lee Roth as the lead vocalist to Sammy Hagar, you know, there was a huge shift in sound. You know, I think Van Halen is a better party band with David Lee Roth. But when Sammy came in, they became a better, more mature song. There's more mature songwriting with Sammy Hagar. They're, I think, musically a better band with Sammy Hagar than with David Lee Roth. Because you do have Sammy also... And Dave and, um, and Eddie probably playing off each other because Sammy's a great guitar player too. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't you can't forget about that. Um, and, but the right. sound change and and it, and I this this podcast should not be about what's better, uh, the Van Halen or Van Hagar because that's just been done to death and it doesn't matter. I see them <laughs> as kind of like the the Black Sabbath with Dio and the Black Sabbath with Ozzy. They're two hugely different things and two great things. You know separate separate bands almost yeah you know, because the sound changed so much uh and i could really i could listen to any van halen with david lee roth and i can listen to any van halen with sammy and, and enjoy it just as much you know it's, it's 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 so it's so good and and again i went back and i listened and i it's just a whole new appreciation for him now as i'm an older you know more mature musician i'll say <laughs> not a better one just a more mature one and i really I, I dug into those songs and i heard stuff i haven't heard before you know um you know one, one other thing i gotta mention i'm not sure if you know this but I, I remember this was uh big news when people found out about uh that eddie van halen did the guitar solo in the michael jackson song beat it yeah he wasn't yeah. he he did it for free he did it in a half hour he came in, recorded in a half hour, blah, 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 and off he went. Yeah, and, and he, he even, I think he just showed up with one of his Frankenstrat models and didn't even yeah. like bring his whole rig. He just kind of plugged his own guitar into whatever setup they had at the studio at the time. I remember reading an article on that re- really recently. Somebody posted about that. I don't know if it was on the Rock yeah. Talk page or if it was just on my normal news feed on, on social media or what, but I remember thinking, wow, just to, to be on that level where you could just show up without any prior yeah. preparation to something like Michael Jackson in his yeah, absolute just- of his prime and then just lay down something like that in a half hour it takes a truly remarkable man to be able to do something like that and i got nothing but the most respect for this guy and i'm kicking myself so hard in the rear for like you know not not really getting into him sooner because he's fantastic and i've really been missing out this whole time just kind of chalking him up as like just this whatever shredder guy but like he is so much more than that so you know uh, the big takeaway from all of this uh, these recent events for me has been like any of you out there that are that were kind of in the same same camp as where I was of just kind of writing them off as some like crazy big virtuoso guy and like whatever you know like another Ingve Malmsteen or something like no go listen to him and and, and listen to some of his stuff he, even in some of the earlier like what because that, that was the thing I got I got um what's the album that has the baby on the on the on the on the cover 1984 yeah so that I ended up actually picking that up like forever ago. I was like, I found it at a CD store and I was like, all right, it's Van Halen. I got to check it out. And I was kind of disappointed right by it musical, but new musically, like, like I was expecting something a, a little more, I don't know what I was expecting, but I, I kind of got, it was like, okay, like really cool, like party rock kind of stuff, but it wasn't really my thing. And like, for me, like, I kind of got the impression, like, I hate to say it, but I think that Eddie was kind of too good for something like that. You know, like, like, like just his playing on every song just outshined so much of what the rest of the band was doing. Nothing against those musicians, but just compositionally, yeah. it didn't really stick with me. And it was like a kind of one-off. I listened to it once or twice, and then I never came back to it. And sure enough, a bunch of songs from 1984 came on on like the Spotify playlist. But then there were so many other songs, and I think some of them must have come from the Hagar days, which I, I want to get more into that and kind of see where they where they sort of took off and evolved later on. I'd probably, You'll probably like that more. 
Probably. Yeah, I think you like the Hagar stuff more. But I 1984, it, it, it's weird that you say 1984 didn't do it for you because that was the one I went back to. Like really? that was the one I just I listened to straight through the other day after he died. I'm like, this is amazing. I love the um <laughs> I, I, one of my favorite songs by Van Halen is on that album. It's called I'll Wait. Um and, and but Top Jimmy, the whole album I really liked, and that's the one I went back to the most since I've been kind of that's interesting. That, that's listening really, really interesting. I don't yeah. want to knock anyone who's super into it. You know, if that's your thing, that's your jam, go for it. But you know, for, yeah. for me, like, like, I, I would much rather hear Eddie playing in something. Uh, I see because I'm a big Steve Vai fan, so I like the real, like, off the wall, crazy, like, more artistic kind of stuff. Yeah. So, like, hearing well, Eddie, he was also getting in, they were also getting into keyboards and stuff, like, you know, they, that's that's yeah. the album with Jump on it. Uh, so mm -hmm. when that yeah, came out, a lot of, song? I believe it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of a lot of people back then didn't like the fact that he wasn't playing guitar, he was playing keyboards. Uh, what the hell is this? Is the guitar? Is the guitar god playing keyboards? What's you know? A lot of people back when that was released back then mm -hmm. didn't like it. They they're like, okay, they jumped the shark. They're 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 selling out. Whatever. Yeah, doing more um, poppy kind of but, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that was the last album they did with David Lee Roth. So that's oh, when okay. it was starting to. Yeah, that was it's that's when everything was starting to. Yeah, to to fail with them really was that album. And then after that, Sammy came on board, and then um. You know, they put out a, a lot of really good albums with Sammy. Different, but still really, really good. Like I said, you may enjoy that because they did a I'll little probably more like experiment. The stuff a lot uh, better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the songwriting got even stronger. Uh, they did experiment a little bit, but they experimented in a way that it still was catchy and it was it, it was uh, pop radio oriented. But what's well, Sammy Hagar? I, I he's said we could do a whole show on Sammy Hagar because he's been around forever. I mean, the, the damn guy is yeah. in his well, mid seventies. He's still going. Yeah, he's still going. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's still going. Uh, uh, and he has a he has a really good auto autobiography too. If you want to read that, that's oh, Sammy that's Hagar has a really interesting story. I'll I'll say that. But you know, again, the the beat it solo. Give it a listen, man, and and listen to it now with with open ears. That you're like, okay, this is Eddie Van Halen. Twenty seconds uncredited didn't get paid for it came in yeah. as a favor for yeah. quincy jones while just, the, just the, did the it band for the was out of town. yeah it just came in and did it and left and and yeah, and that's awesome mad props the story, yeah the story goes like he didn't even think man nothing Eh, whatever i'm just gonna I'll leave a thing down for somebody just for you know for whatever yeah. reason just for the sake of playing you know you can you can tell yeah. this, this, this is a guy who is the epitome of like just doing what you love because you love it you know he wasn't yeah. like like he, he was never like a fame chaser he was never like a guy that like tried to like make a big public spectacle of himself he just played and he was just yeah, really just really played. damn good and he naturally gleaned such a such this huge following not even a cult following but just a a genuine broad body of respect across the entire rock and metal community and that you can't really say that about many guitar players especially like, like even a lot of the great virtuosos now a lot of them kind of have their own kind of niche camps like either you're all about this guy or you never heard of him i can't tell you how many times i tell somebody i'm a steve vibe fan and they say who and it's, it's like how do you not know about yeah. this guitar yeah. guy? this guy who is just a, on a whole other level a huge musical inspiration for people like me and there's people out there that never even heard of this guy you know and it's you know but like that's not really the case with van halen i feel like he has such a broad array of public appeal and i think i think a big part of that just stems from you know the, the it, it's it's what's one of those like you don't buy what you're doing you buy why you're doing it and i think that's where van halen kind of sets himself apart from so many others because he just played and that was it there was never any kind of ulterior motive and he yeah just, he just you know, probably just loved the play yeah you know there, you, you there's, can, a, there's a bunch of stories you could hear it in there's a bunch of stories that that are going around um, about him um, that I had to look up, you know, after he passed away there, you know, people are, mm. uh, music pages are publishing them. One of the stories that I do want to share is, um, and it was like a, it was a rumored thing back in the eighties, but it's actually true. His Van Halen on their rider banned Brown M&Ms from being backstage. Huh. Um, and, you know, on their contract rider, it did list no Brown M&Ms. That's true. But the reason for it was, it was, it was, uh, it was the band's way of ensuring the venue paid close attention to the document they actually gave them. It wasn't because they, they hated Brown M&Ms, you know, and it wasn't like a rock star thing. It was, it was more of a test. 
It was a test to see if they actually read the, the document that they gave, the contract that they gave. Yeah, that was actually kind of cool because I always thought that was just a bunch of bullshit, but apparently it's, it's, it was true. That's really he funny. Also, he also pulled a gun on Fred Durst too, so that's another thing. <laughs> so that's immediate more respect, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyone who put, pulls a gun on him or nails him to a cross or sets him on fire or just they're, they're already up on our list of like people we want to thank and share our love that's for. Great. <laughs> thank you eddie thank you eddie <laughs> yeah that's really funny i, I didn't know um, see there's so many stories about him i've never heard before because i, I was yeah. never really super into him but yeah I, I got i got a lot of catching up to do man i really want to get to know this guy and his history not even just so much now because he's deceased but just because he's one of the great, one of the greatest musicians of all time. And I really should, should, should give him a lot more of my attention. You know, like you said, um, you know, usually when a, a musician of that caliber passes away, you know, people start looking. You kind of start into, jumping on the wagon, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. I was well, totally like super into him this whole time. It's like, yeah, can you name five of his songs? I mean, I can't, I can't name five of his songs. I'll well, admit it right here and now. But the nice thing is that, that uh, the Van Halen catalog, um, has just went up as far as the ranking on I, 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 maybe there was the billboard chart, some, some charts. I yeah, a lot of downloads on like iTunes. That. Yeah. It's they like number they just one right exploded. now. Yeah. You know, the nice thing is it is exploded. So like rock is now up in the forefront again, you know, beating out whatever, whatever sort of pop is on there now. Yeah. yeah. Whatever pop nonsense is there. Somebody's, <laughs> you know, if somebody's taking a shower with their cat or something. I don't know what that, that, song about a cat or something oh, uh, God, i live under a rock dude i have no clue no idea i don't even bother with um, that stuff. i'm just in my own little world here with the music i'm into yeah it's about i don't know some about a cat or something in, in the shower i don't know it's it whatever but uh but van halen uh, surpassed that so you know so that's that's, that's awesome. good that's good it's good for that's rock awesome. music yeah <laughs> it, it's a testament of hope for all the rest of us out there that that, that yeah that you could definitely find some good out of a situation like this and, you know, if, if nothing else, hey, there's that many more thousands of people out there listening to Van Halen. And that's great. Because the rumor has now the family's going to be digging into like unreleased stuff. Of course, like it always happens when. Yeah, all the posthumous like, things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing some of that stuff, you know, because uh, apparently yeah. the, the 5150 studio has a lot of tapes. Uh, and, you know, his brother's still alive, the drummer, you mm -hmm. know, and. Another nice thing that I found out about this after he passed away was, you know, um, their bass player, uh, Michael Anthony, wasn't playing with them for a while because uh, Eddie's son took over and there was a big, you know, they weren't talking for a while. Sammy Hagar wasn't talking to him, but Sammy Hagar and Michael Anthony came out and said like, oh no, we were talking before he died. Like we just didn't make it public that we were mending the fence, you know? So that's another good thing that these friends at least got to mend the fence before he passed away. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good well, thing. Well, what happened to, to, to break that fence? Did something happen? Uh, probably, who knows, really. I mean, he got, you know, like there was a tour with Sam and Dave at one time. Sam and, uh, Sammy did, can't get along with David Lee Roth. Then they wanted to make a, a record with David Lee Roth. And so Sammy Hagar's like, oh, what about me? And then Sammy Hagar and Michael Anthony went and did um, Chicken Foot the band chicken foot um and you know who knows i mean who knows really what goes on you know the inner workings and stuff but basically there was a lot of people not talking to each other that used to be friends the rock press probably had a lot to do with it you know mm -hmm. uh, because you know gossip sells, mountains out of mold yeah exaggerating things right. and blowing stuff out of proportion right. and getting the public all riled right. up about stuff and then they're probably getting all kinds of hate mail and threats and whatever else yeah. like you said who knows and, and, but, but the nice thing was that they were, they all meant, they, they claimed the, the fences were mended. Everything is good. Everything was good before he died. So, you know, like, well, like we good. were talking, that's a relief, you know, don't wait till someone dies. You know, if you have a grudge against somebody, you know, yeah, you never know. Cause he, he, he wasn't even that old. Know. Was he, what, what was he like? 65? Yeah. He was 65. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. he was, he wasn't that, yeah, I wasn't that old. I mean, uh, again, Sammy Hagar's in his seventies. And mm -hmm. <laughs> so one thing I, I regret is I never saw them live. I never got to see Van Halen live. Yeah. With David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar. I had a couple chances and never did it. Oh, really? And so, mm. so that's another thing. 
If that's not thing, if you get out to the shows, you know, when the shows yeah. come back, go <laughs> see your favorite, your your favorite band, world. You, know? you guys all better get your butts at concerts and start going to see stuff because you never live music in general. I don't care if you just go, I don't care if you just go down the streets of the local bar and see a band. Go see live music because we're yeah. all dying here. It's that's the yeah, only exactly. it's, the, it's by far the best, most surefire way you can support the arts. Just they must have been shows. fantastic in concert, though. I mean, Van Halen must have been amazing. You know, they start off as a, as a cover band playing like backyard parties. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how they started it. And like, that must have been really cool. Yeah. You know, imagine going, going kind of a to cool, a, like underdog story of like, yeah, going, going to a, uh, you know, somebody's house a party with nobody. a barrel in the back. And then you hear you Van know, Halen the back, ripping yeah. a soul on a Led Zeppelin song. Yeah. Like, Whoa, what? Yeah. These guys are better than the been, actual band. <laughs> yeah, it must have been amazing back then, you know, the late 70s going, going and seeing these guys just rip it up. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was, I always read about was uh, when Black Sabbath with Ozzy were doing their last tour uh, in the 70s, the Never Say Die tour, they mm-hmm. had Van Halen opening for them. Oh, really? That's and, pretty And cool. apparently, yeah, they, they, Van Halen destroyed them night after night because Sabbath was falling apart. They were probably. Yeah, that was like kind of like on the end of their like kind of heyday yeah. before the deal. That was, they were ready to get rid of Ozzy because Ozzy could barely stand. So, and then. Yeah, yeah, the he was a real mess. California. Yeah. Yeah. And that must, that must have been something to see, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen, man. Uh, fantastic musician, great songwriter. Yeah, I, I feel like there's so much wasted potential with his early passing. Like, I would love to hear, because he, if he lived another 10, 15 years, think of what else he could have done, whether he released more work as a solo artist or maybe at that point, like in a later chapter of his career, I like to always fantasize, like, what if we put him in like some like real crazy, like progressive band or like some of these. Oh, wow, yeah. like, that, that's because he's that caliber of a player. Like, I would love to hear like, like that. That's what I wanted, because I know he's a player that can handle that kind of stuff. So I would love to see him in a sort of like dream theater-esque group where like all of the musicians are like crazy virtuosos that was i think a big part of why i was disappointed by some of the stuff on 1984 because musically a lot of the songs are i mean they're great songs right they're super solid like classic rock songs start to finish they're really they were made for mtv band. yeah exactly and like that's the kind of yeah. stuff that never jives with me and like i would love to hear him do like some real off the wall like experimental stuff because i know he would excel at it and probably be the best at it Check out Van Halen 3, I believe it is. Okay. That's the one they released after Sammy Hagar left the band. They okay. got the lead singer from Extreme, Gary Sharon, and they made an album that everyone hated. <laughs> it, it would probably you know, be one of my favorites. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not a bad album. It's, it's different. That's funny. You know, and, and Gary Sharon is a great vocalist. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not on the level of like, the Blaze Bailey Iron Maiden albums. Like Gary's actually a good fit. He was a good fit for that music. Is it around the but same you may time like period? That. Is it in the nineties? Yeah, it was in the nineties. And when everything, yeah, when everything went to hell, you know, yeah. musically <laughs> for all the rock bands in the nineties. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll put it in my queue, <laughs> my my ever growing queue, which I'll, I'll probably listen to it sooner than later because I'm, I'm looking to get more into Van Halen stuff, especially you know because like I just sample, like I said, like a half hour's worth of just whatever stuff came up first on Spotify. And I wish I could remember the name of the song, but it um, it starts with this like real big like piano introduction, and it was like really really cool. And of course, I really liked it. And it it wasn't so much that I liked it just because there was piano in it, but yeah. it was because the rest of the song was really freaking good. And Is it right now? Is it called right now? That might have been it. Yeah, I think it was called right now. And yeah, it, it, it was it was beautiful. Really- it was awesome, and the solo yeah. in it was amazing. The chorus was super super catchy, and just everything about it. It like it took me on a journey when I was listening to it. Um, I, I was actually, I was going through that in preparation for last week's episode. Cause you know, for those of you who don't know, we were planning on doing this last week, but we had some technical issues. Um, <laughs> after we finished our black metal episode, Josh's computer just completely went kaput and like started shutting itself off and getting all kinds of crazy. It must've been because we were talking about all that black metal stuff for so long. It was like, you know, some of the demons were coming out. Well, I, I personally, I would like to hear what Josh has to say because we talked about black metal and he's very versed in black metal. I'd like yeah. to hear what a black metal musician would think of something that's way over there you know because <laughs> as yeah. far as like music genres go mm-hmm. you have like the party good time van halen way way over here and then you got 
mayhem, which is way the hell over yeah. here. Well, that's you kind know? of the interesting thing about my friend Josh. He's kind of all over the map. He's not really just yeah. into black metal. He's really, really well versed in a lot of different genres. Like he's a oh, big flash seen... guy. He's a big death guy. He's a, he's a big yeah. Van Halen fan. Van Halen's one of his favorite guitar players. I know well, that. Well, so, uh, well, they, yeah. they're, they're we'll have to bring him point, back you know? for, for some episodes because he, he he could definitely give you give, give the whole world a really valuable history lesson on yeah. a lot of these bands a lot of the you know a lot of the culture that's behind the the the, the, the different styles a lot of a lot of the stories behind some of the bands like he really the the, the, the the guy's knowledge of some of this stuff just blows me away every time we hang out he just he, he just has such a wealth of knowledge about a lot of this stuff and it's not even like it's one thing like you could expect that from like if there's someone out there who's like a real big like black metal fan and that's like the only thing they're into of course they're gonna know all these different details yeah. but he kind of knows that he's on that level with so many other facets of it it's mind-blowing so we'll definitely he's, have he's to bring a, you back buddy. we'll, we'll have to bring yeah. you back for some more stuff well, it's interesting that you say like van halen was one of his favorite guitar players and that just proves our point that you know eddie van halen went he just goes beyond just being a, a guitar lovers guitar guy you know what i mean like yeah. you got this guy who loves black metal yeah. who's also saying eddie van halen's fantastic you know yeah exactly um, that just goes to show yeah, like exactly. what we've been saying for you know for this podcast is eddie van halen was one of the few you know that that really transcends genre um yeah. as far as like breaks um, boundaries that really yeah he's yeah, a musician so. that anybody can appreciate well, Right, yeah, uh, and, and you don't even have to be a musician to appreciate them. That's that's another thing. Yeah. the Van Halen writes some good songs, some great catchy songs. Some of them, like 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 the ones you were mentioning that you listened to on 1984, they were made for MTV. Yeah, but there are other ones. And I, I can you know, understand like, why it's so popular and why it's got such the following it does. I totally get it. But I I think, uh, and I said this you know earlier, that with David Lee Roth, they were a fun party band, and that's all they were. You know, and he he wrote some great souls and great licks and stuff in that. But it was, mm -hmm. it's 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 the drinking, the partying, the girls, the booze. That was what Van Halen was. When they got Sammy, they they did become more mature songwriters, and he could tell. Again, it's 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 what I always said. You know, Sammy came in, and and Eddie Van Halen was able to play off of Sammy because Sammy's a musician too. Mm -hmm. David Lee Roth is just a singer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got one less guy. Yeah, see, I'd be curious to hear right. all the Hagar stuff because I'd probably really yeah. dig it. Yeah. You'll love it. You'll love it because it is it is a little bit more. There's a little bit more complexity to it, a little bit more musical, musically mature. I'll say, even, even lyrically, it's better. Uh, mm -hmm. it, well, Sammy like, again, Sammy Hagar's a, a great musician. He was to me, he was the perfect guy to write with Eddie Van Halen. They, you know, they were they were two really great musicians, like making some really really good stuff. Yeah, so what, was it the same lineup with Hagar? Was it only the difference in singer, or were there other lineup changes too? No, it was the same lineup from the beginning. It was always Eddie Van Halen, his brother Alex Van Halen on drums, Michael Anthony on bass. And that, that was the band with David Lee Roth singing. After David left, Sammy came in. When Sammy left, uh, Gary Sharon came in. And then that's when it starts to get a little uh, different because – uh, Gary Sharon left. I think David Lee Roth came back. Then uh, Michael Anthony left the bass player. So they got Eddie Van Halen's son, Wolfie, <laughs> Wolfgang, to come in and play bass. Oh, okay. uh, but one of the things that they one of the things they lost when they lost Michael Anthony was Michael Anthony's the the, the other voice of Van Halen. He's the guy who does all the backing vocals and harmonies and stuff. Oh, because then okay. he doesn't really sing. Yeah. So that those really unique backing vocals you hear on these van halen songs that's, that's michael bass. anthony oh huh, okay yeah it's bass player yeah um <laughs> so for the record that, so, eddie himself doesn't sing at all right i don't think he does i don't i mean he may <laughs> sing a little bit but he's not really oh, are, we sure he's not oh, yeah, are we sure he's not the lead singer are we sure he's not the lead singer yeah, going back to uh, the Las Vegas news. Yeah, he's not the lead singer. No. Oh, okay. Okay, just making sure we can set the record straight on that. All right, man. Let's wrap it up. Final thoughts on Eddie Van Halen. So, uh, yeah, uh, any uh, all of you folks out there that are just like me, you know, that kind of like wrote this guy off as just another shredder from the '80s. 
um, you're doing this man a huge disservice by by thinking that and you owe it to yourself to to go through and dig into some of his rep you know whether you check out the stuff with David Lee Roth if you're into more of the party kind of stuff I know I myself I'm going to really dig into the albums with Sammy Hagar and I'm going to check out three uh, really kind of see what this rogue record has to offer it might be something that really really pleases me musically so um, as always you know I, I got some homework to do I got so much music to to, to catch up on and listen to and this you know, doing the show for the past couple of weeks has been just so great for, you know, my music feed of just kind of branching out and trying so many new things and discovering so much great, awesome music out there that I never heard before. And hopefully we collectively here at Rock Talk can bring that same feeling for many of you out there. Jeff? If you haven't listened to Van Halen in a while, go back and re-listen. It sucks that you had to wait till the guy passed away to really re-listen to this great music whether you're a uh, van halen with roth fan or you're a van halen with sammy hagar fan it's all good and it, it just he's a fantastic guitar player and he's a great songwriter and these songs they'll bring if you haven't heard them since you were younger they'll bring you back if it's the first time you're hearing them it'll open up a new world to to, to, to you because van halen it they don't write bad songs really i mean even the songs are a little weaker they're they still, still pretty good. Songs. Yeah. Yeah. They're still they pretty still good. Solid the songs. They, they really, they really were a, a, a great band. Unfortunately, I don't think you're going to, I don't think Alex, the drummer is going to do anything without his brother. Cause he never did before. Um, I think it's just Van Halen's just that that's it. Uh, yeah. They may release some stuff that, you know, was recorded before his passing, but, but Van Halen's gone. Uh, Eddie Van Halen's gone, unfortunately, and uh, but his music will live on with us forever. Right, and 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 like I said, man, it's it's getting there. Uh, it's getting way more popular now since he passed away. Unfortunately, that's the way it works. But uh, in a nutshell, if you haven't listened to Van Halen in a while, or you're not familiar, because these young kids today, I don't know, with their with their disco tech and stuff, <laughs> listen, to, listen to some rock music. Listen to Van Halen. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Rock on, guys. <laughs> 